Our next problem is a 3D problem and we're going to use a scalar solution for this problem and what we have is a journal bearing at A and a thrust bearing, here's A, and then a thrust bearing at B and what we mean by a journal bearing and a thrust bearing a journal bearing allows motion to occur um, through the axis of the bearing while a thrust bearing prevents the motion so no motion is uh, allowed and so what that will end up mean, meaning when we make our free body diagram and our reaction forces is that we'll need an axial um, axial force for a reaction for B but we will not have an axial force reaction at A so we have these two bearings and then we have a bar that's been uh, wrapped around kind of like a crank and we know that at uh, this point here we have an 80 pound force and what we need to determine is to determine what our uh, force on the handle uh, P needs to be to maintain equilibrium. Once we do that we'll need to determine what our reactions are at A and B. So I've gone ahead and cheated a little bit and made our free body diagram or at least portions of it already um, and the reason was to uh, try to speed things along it's a little difficult to make clearly and I'm not even sure if I even made it clearly or not but we'll have to uh, deal with that I suppose so what we have is um, let me bring up our highlighter uh, what we have is um, an axis our y-axis here um, an x-axis and a z-axis which is the same as what we had with our original bar. Um, I included the distances, all the distances are in inches, although it looks like I forgot a couple labels there as well. And um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to, um, let me see what color we should use here. I guess I'll use a blue to include our, um, our forces. We have our applied force and we have a force here um, of 80 pounds and that's given and that's halfway between our supports of, at 14 inches and that's uh, um, vertically downward. We also have an unknown force here and that's P and then we have our um, reactions at A and B and again we have a journal bearing at A and a thrust bearing at B. So at A we have to include our reactions of force and so we'll call this AZ and AX but we do not have anything in the Y direction um, and we'll talk about the moments of force um, at those locations in just a minute. At B we have um, a force in the Z direction we'll call that BZ a force in the X direction, we'll call that BX, and then a reaction in the Y direction, BY. I try to make them all in the positive coordinate system direction. Now at this moment we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six unknowns. We have P, AX, AZ, BX, B, Y, B, Z. So we have six unknowns. Now you may recall um, in our discussion earlier that we could potentially also have moments, um, moment reactions due to our bearings um, in the um, X direction and in the Z direction. But if we were to do that about these axes, at, um, what we'd have is an overconstrained part and we'd have too many unknowns. As it is, we already have six unknowns and we can't allow any more uh, unknowns because we only have six equations of equilibrium. So we'll use uh, one equation of equilibrium to solve for P and so the equation of equilibrium we're going to use for that is summing the moments about the y-axis and summing the moments about the y-axis is equal to zero. When we do that, we have two moments of force about the y-axis. Uh, we have P and we have our 80 pound, 80 pound force. Uh, the reactions AX, AZ, BX, BZ, and BY all pass through Y, so none of them make a 
moment of force, only P in our 80 pound force. And so we can see that we have an 80 pound force and that's at a distance of 10 inches from our y-axis and that is creating a negative moment if this is our positive direction um, well actually I should say that this is our positive direction about our y-axis we see that our 80 pound force is creating a negative moment and so we have a minus 80 times 10 pounds I'm um, 10 inches as for our force P, we see that P, and here's our y-axis, y-axis extended and P is below it. Um, and when we uh, create a force P or apply a force P, it's creating a positive moment about our y-axis. And so we have plus P, and that is at a distance of eight inches. And again, those are the only two moments of force, and the sum of those are equal to zero. And so we see that P is equal to 100 pounds. So now let's look at some of our reactions. I suppose our easiest reaction to solve for is BY, and then because there's only one force in the Y direction. So we are going to sum our forces in the y direction. So the force in the y direction is equal to zero. And so we have by is equal to zero. That makes that a little simple. And so we'll include that over here. Now um, we will sum our moments about the x direction. When we sum our moments about the uh, x axis, I should say, we will have two moments of force. Uh, we will have our 80 pound force as well as our unknown BZ. Now when we sum our moments of about the uh, any axis, uh, we are only looking for forces that create a moment about that axis. And so BY does not create a moment about the X axis, nor does BX or P. And the reason for that is because they are parallel to the, to the X axis. So we will sum our moments about the X axis. And when we do that, we see that we have um, our 80 pound force. And that is located at a distance of 14 inches from our X axis. And uh, that is creating a, um, if this is our positive using our right hand rule about our X axis, we can see that it's creating a negative moment about the X axis. And then we have BZ, which is creating a moment and that's located a distance of 14 plus 14 or 28 inches and that's creating a positive moment and so we'll give that a positive and that is equal to zero and solving for BZ BZ is equal to 40 pounds and so we can put that right up here now finally, um, at least for this slide, we will sum our forces in the Z direction because now we only have one unknown in the Z direction, that's AZ. And so we sum our forces in the Z direction. So the force in the Z direction is equal to zero. And so we have a minus 80 pounds, that's from our applied load, plus BZ, which we just solved to be 40 pounds, and then plus AZ, that's equal to zero, and we should see very simply, AZ is equal to 40 pounds. We will now sum our moments about the Z axis. And when we do that, we will um, attain our one of our remaining unknowns, BX. The moments uh, about the Z axis um, are created by BX and by P. So the Moments about the z axis is equal to zero. And we have uh, P, which is, we saw it to be 100 pounds. And that's at a distance of six and four. Maybe a little bit difficult to see on this diagram, but if you look, look at the original, you'll see it's 10 inches or six plus four. So that's 10 inches. And that is creating, uh, according to our right hand rule, um, a negative moment about the z-axis and then we have bx 
and that's located at a distance of 28 inches. And that um, as well is creating a negative moment about the uh, z-axis. And so the sum of those is equal to zero. We find that bx is equal to minus 35.7 pounds. So even though I assumed in the x direction, in the positive x direction, uh, that assumption was wrong. And it just means that bx, that the reaction is actually going in this direction right here. Now I would not change my free body diagram. I would just go with the flow. Um, our final unknown looks like to be ax as we can see over here. Um, and so now we're going to sum the forces in the x direction. So sum the forces in the x direction is equal to zero. And what do we have? We have P, which is a minus because it's going in the negative x direction. So minus 100 pounds. And then we have plus AX. And then we're going to have plus BX. But BX is again is a minus 35.7 pounds. And so that's equal to zero. Solving for that, we have AX is equal to, looks to be 135.7 pounds, and it's a positive 135.7, 135.7 pounds. And that solves this problem.